Hi guys, we're here with the Surface Laptop 3 and this is our full review. The first thing I want to say with this device, as a productivity tool, it's scary good. I'm using this full time uh, at Microsoft over at Team Xbox where I work. I'm not affiliated with the Surface team so these reviews, impressions are, are strictly my own. But it's scary good how out of the box, right when I opened it I could set up OneDrive, um, Office 365, OneNote right away and get connected and just jump right into my work. The software experiences, the out of the box experiences and Windows integrating all that together. I feel like I got used to this laptop within an hour of using it because I've been transitioning and reviewing these devices so much. It was so seamless how it got integrated. So my general thoughts are this is a great device. The question is, is this the best laptop of 2019? So let's find out. Let's go over the major changes um, from last year. Uh, major differences are they included a larger screen, 15% larger, 15 inches versus a 13 inch. Um, you still have the 13 inch variants, but this 15 inch model is the flagship. It now features a metallic finish, so it comes in metallic silver or black. Now one confusing part is the sandstone finish is only on the 13 inch models. Another confusing thing is all the Alcantara is only on 13 inch models. So they saved all the aluminum finishes for the top of the line. And that also includes the AMD Ryzen 7 or the AMD Ryzen 5. This is the Ryzen 7 upgraded all the way, 512 gigabytes. So to sum up, only the flagship 15 inch consumer grades have the AMD Surface Edition. If you want the Intel chips, you're stuck to the 13 inch models and those don't even have the AMD variant. For business customers, you have the option to pay hundred bucks more to have those Intel quad core chips. So it's a little confusing. Resolution is 2496 by 1664, which is a 201 PPI. They kept the same PPI virtually as the Surface laptop of last year. So it's not 4K, but the scaling on the Windows devices works great. Um, you can just, like I said, jump in and use it and not have to do any custom work and nothing. In my days of using this with Outlook or for my work, um, formatted funny. Three by two ratio, you can use the Surface Pen, it's 10 touch enabled. It's not detachable like the Surface Book 2. If you're coming from the Pro 7 line or a 13 inch, one of the great things about the improved screen in terms of productivity is it feels so immersive, it, it just releases and it's this comfortable um, work experience. I was using the Surface Pro 3 and so compacted in the environment. I had muscle memory using this device and I just feel so relieved to have much more screen real estate in a premium design finish that's not as heavy as the Surface Book 2. In terms of design, a little upgrades. It's in the keyboard here on the Surface Book 2 keyboard. The keys rise on that one and they're a little too hard to press down for me. Here, they made the smart decision to divot the keys in, both to save the screen on the keyboard, but also when you're typing, you don't have to raise your wrist even just by those little millimeters where that divot is. One of the best parts interacting with this device, the keyboard and the trackpad. So I said last year with the Surface Laptop 2 that the keyboard is near perfection. I have a lot of qualms with things like the MacBooks and their butterfly keys because I feel like they don't have enough distance when you give when you press down on it. Like literally, it's like typing on a very, very, very thin touch screen where there's no tactile feedback. At least here, it's, it bounces, it jives, it, it, it feels great on the hands and I feel they made improvements over last year as well. So this is even better than last year because the membrane on the bottom, when you press hard on the keys, there's a firm yet a soft rubber membrane that they proved. And I feel like they made improvements on that. So you can press hard on this and you can feel it that it gives you this kind of blunted matte finish when you're typing fast. It's not clicky. It's the right amount of space and travel. Now they made some changes to the F4 and the F8. Um, keys right here. So there's little uh, notches right there where you can feel where they are and a little difference in the function lines button Now in terms of the trackpad, it's 20% larger and what does that really translate to? You can finally use Windows gestures comfortably Two fingers to scroll up and down you can pinch and zoom um, And using three fingers you can finally multitask swiping left and swiping right will change the apps that you're using so I'm finally using that because of this larger trackpad um, and I find myself not using as much with the Pro 7 line or any of the smaller trackpads because they're just simply too small to use. 
With the power that's in this device and the improved SSDs, which are two times faster than last year, it's amazing. Out of the box, this is blazing fast with the Windows Hello and IR cameras here. One of the changes using three finger gestures is it's pretty jarring, um, the change between apps. It's almost so fast it can't catch up with itself. So that's where the UX should really step up and show you kind of the midway point between changing apps, kind of like what you see in MacBooks. So I'll be swiping right, but I don't know what's right, and all of a sudden, boom, Excel pops up. I swipe right again, I forget what was right next to that, and it was Edge. Um, in terms of the USB-C and all the changes in ports, you still have your Surface adapter right here, USB-A, headphone jack, but the USB-C. Now, I appreciate USB-C because I use it for docking purposes, but it doesn't have Thunderbolt. So you cannot charge this device with the USB-C port. I tried it myself. Um, and you get a prompt saying to charge the device only with the Surface Included Surface Adapter. So that means the only way to dock and charge is using the Surface Dock. The Surface Dock is aging, it's a little old and you can't run 4K, um, two 4K monitors at 60 Hz refresh rate. It's just quite unfortunate that you can't charge for the USB-C Thunderbolt output on this device, but I'm very thankful that it is here. Obviously, that's an opportunity for future improvements. They've made improvements to the repairability of this year. And you can remove this whole bottom panel to upgrade the SSDs, but you're probably not gonna upgrade it yourself. It's probably for repairability for commercial customers. But they did rework this whole device to include things like instant on and fast charge, um, repairability and SSDs, and the custom AMD chip with the keyboard here. That's where they've included the Omnisonic speaker. So the speakers and sound go right through this keyboard. It's pretty impressive, right? Not a screw or a hinge in sight with one touch um, open. Benchmarking though. This is where PC Mag, highly recommend you check their out and all their different tests. Um, they have tests for productivity, creativity, video rendering, and battery life. Now I would say for the creativity spectrum, the Surface Book ranks pretty high in the pack for them um, compared to all the different um, work, let's say work premium type laptops. Um, interestingly though, the AMD 7 chip doesn't seem to perform as well as the quad core 10th gen Intel processor that this competes with. Um, you can look at the benchmarks yourself. The Dell model uh, consistently ranks on the top. So um, the AMD chip does excel at video rendering. So check a look at that. It has the shortest video rendering time. And that's because I believe our design teams have been focusing on the benefits of using a mobile chip in terms of like fanless design. There is fan here, but they're taking aspects of a mobile first world, all the great things we love about mobile, long battery life, always on um, fanless designs or at least advanced cooling. And that's where I feel that's why the Surface Laptop 3 excelled at that. The productivity and day-to-day -day use, what you will physically see and react to and have great impressions on and be delighted are the increased speeds of the SSD, how fast um, they make that it's twice as fast, coupled with the advanced custom um, chips that they made for cooling. So you won't hear this fan as much. I haven't even when running Power BI or Outlook or OneDrive or running videos. It seems that with all this improved um, internals here, even with the increased battery life on this larger chassis, it virtually remains the same as the Surface 13 inch. So it means about eight hours, but let's not forget you have fast charge. So if you need to go to the airport real quick um, and you're about to board your flight, you have 30 minutes, you can get your battery charged halfway. If you're going to school or commute, 30 minutes. You usually have 30 minutes for a quick break to recharge. So I appreciate that even though the battery isn't longer, I can charge this guy faster. Microsoft has this mantra of a mobile first, cloud first, or always connected world. So mobile first, is, I feel, is, is leading the surface charge. So even for devices like this, they take the benefits of what we like most. So um, we like, like instant on, we like all day battery life, we like fast charging, we like always connected. All those design elements are gonna show up in the Surface line in general across the board, whether it be the Surface Pro 7 over here, having all those features, and mainly the Surface Pro X that has the first Windows on our Qualcomm. And for this, the team was dedicated to getting Surface on the running AMD chips. I think this is a very strong showing 
contender for the best laptop of 2019 for an all around laptop and consumer, prosumer um, device with a metal finish. Now as for the aluminum finish here, I still love Alcantara, so I wish I could have seen that on here and not be forced to get these metal variants. If anything, I may have already dented this laptop just by a spec. It makes me really sad right here. Um, and it feels a little lifeless because you don't have that feel of kind of like the Pro 7s and how all their keyboards are lined. Um, but I'll take it for what the prosumers wanted or corporations wanted or what we want. Little finishes that are a little easier to clean. Um, I just wish the sandstone aesthetic would have been on the 15 inch. But overall, this is a great device for getting in, doing your work, instant on, sending that email, doing that deck, having a great trackpad, typing well, feeling so comfortable, um, getting connected and sending it out. The reason why the laptop war front this year is harder is because we're seeing very innovative devices. And I'm very interested to see um, the new improvements on things with gaming laptops, especially with the Asus Rogue Zephyrus. Um, we're going to get that soon. And that's more of an entertainment focused device with a discrete graphics card. So it just depends on where you want to go. Then you have the Surface Correct, it's totally mobile. So if you want to double down on desktop, we have Asus or the double screen laptops or all those cool RTX um, discrete graphics cards. If you want this um, integrated, all-in-ones here that are good for everyday use and you have this versus the Dells and then if you want the mobile front first you have the Pro 7 2-in-1s um, and you have the Surface Pro X coming along so this war front is uh, entirely different than where it was last year so it's a great showing by Microsoft I hope this helped you decide um, with my experiences on the Surface laptop and look forward to our Surface Pro 7 review over here and the Pro X that's coming out pretty soon and the Asus Rogue Zephyrus that's coming out. It's an exciting time to be a laptop um, PC gaming fan all across the board. All right, everyone, thank you so much for supporting the channel and we'll see you in the next video.